The most disturbing moments at Castro's sentencing came with a first look inside the home itself. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan is live on Five right now with the photos taken uh, of the girls after they were rescued. Yeah, well, here they are from the rooms where the girls were held captive to the chains that bound them. We got the first glimpse of what a decade of hell looked like. What happened inside Ariel Castro's home was made real today in court, even down to a scale model with matching paint. An FBI agent described what was turned into a torture chamber, including the chains that bound Castro's victims. Those were found in the upstairs bedrooms. That's um, a chain. Uh, it's in the room that uh, Amanda, I'm sorry, Gina De Jesus and Michelle Knight share. Downstairs, Castro even wired the front doors with alarms. Those are a series of alarm clocks, uh, and they are wired in a makeshift manner to create a, essentially a, an alarm system to the house. This was the only bathroom in the home, but this makeshift commode, rarely emptied, is what his victims were forced to use. And it's up these stairs where they were held captive for 10 years. This is a view from the landing um, at the, after the first set of steps as you go up from the first floor, uh, there's a, a turn, then you go up another set of steps before you reach the second floor. So this is a landing between the first and second floors. At the top of the image is a, a brown curtain and the curtain um, was concealing the landing to the second floor. At the top, the room where Amanda Berry and her baby daughter were locked inside. This is a view from the hallway in the, in the second floor um, of the room that um, was labeled, I believe it's room I, uh, and that is the room that the investigation showed uh, Amanda Berry and her daughter spent the majority of their time. And Castro made sure they would never get out. The door had obviously uh, been modified by the picture here. There's a handle on the outside that's screwed in. Um, it functions to be able to pull the door closed as there's no doorknob attached. And there's one more piece of evidence, a 357 Magnum handgun Castro used to play Russian roulette. I'll be back at six o'clock with rooms where Gina and Michelle were kept. Ron May 6, 2014, one year later, anniversary of finding Gina De Jesus, Amanda Berry, and Michelle Knight. Abandoned house is still sitting. Councilman said it promised to do something about one year later. Look at it.
Number 9, 2207 Seymour Avenue, Ohio. It looks random, but there's a very good reason why you can't see what's left of this house. This was the residence that Ariel Castro kept three girls locked up, tortured and raped over a period of 11 years from 2002 to 2013, until one of them managed to break down a door and scream for help. Unsurprisingly, the demolished house has been blurred, just so everyone can move on. No. He lives in Lakewood. I've watched it on the news and uh, I haven't had a chance to come down. I wish I could have gotten a chance to see the actual houses and stuff, but finding out that he killed himself and um, it's, 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 a, it's a deep situation. Everybody got mixed feelings about it. For those who live in this community and for those who don't, they share the same emotion tonight. To me, it was shocking. Yeah, it was really shocking. A shock for this community on that May evening when the three women escaped to shock now surrounding Castro's suicide. Neighbors here say this community has changed in the way that it looks and the way that people act. We talk to each other more. Um, we're more alert, we're more aware. Everybody has met times like this or when we were gathering for Michelle and stuff like that, that it gave us an uh, uh, opportunity to come together, introduce ourselves. And it is not just some of the people who have changed. Of course, the neighborhood has changed itself. Ariel Castro's house now demolished, replaced Chris with this park and garden for people here to enjoy. Yeah, and just a little while ago, we saw a bunch of kids coming out of school, playing here in the garden in one of the big trees out there as well. So. Right, and I think that's what neighbors will tell you that they want to see. They want to see something good come from the evil that has happened on the street. Indeed, get back to some sense of normalcy here on Seymour Avenue. Absolutely.